In this lab, we'll be taking a look at the muscles of the upper extremity. On our muscle practical checklist, we're on the third column. In part one, we'll be focusing on the muscles of the shoulder and the arm. And then in part two, we'll take a look at the muscles of the forearm. So this is a posterior view of the shoulder, just to kind of get some landmarks and some reference points. This is the large arm model. The muscles are pretty much the same on the small uh, arm model also. We can see here, the uh, just so landmarks, this is the scapular spine, right? So the spine of the scapula. Out over here would be the acromion process. I didn't label that, but that would be on the top over here. This is the trapezius muscle. If you remember from our um, muscles of the trunk, lab. This is the superficial muscle. Uh, they left part of it on here, but it's been reflected so that we, or cut, so that we can see some of the uh, other muscles below it. So the first muscle we want to take a look at is this large triangular muscle on the lateral aspect of the arm. This is called the deltoid, right? Sometimes they say the deltoideus. Delta meaning it's the, uh, the shape of a triangle. So this muscle attaches actually all along the spine of the scapula, the acromion, and then if we turned it around to the front, it would actually go to the clavicle. The fibers all come down and they attach right down over here, about midway down on the humerus on the lateral aspect on the deltoid tuberosity. As a whole, this muscle is a powerful abductor so it brings our uh, our humerus or shoulder joint away from the midline right out to the side um, uh, in the coronal plane All right so this is a powerful abductor now if we go back to the checklist the next four muscles are part of a group right? you may have heard of the rotator cuff group we sometimes call them the sits muscles s i t S. And they include the uh, supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, and the subscapularis. So on this view, we can catch uh, a little bit of uh, some, uh, some of these muscles. The first one up here is the supraspinatus. So you can see here, it's called the supraspinatus because it's above the scapula spine. Right? It actually sits in the supraspinous fossa from when we did the bone lab. The second muscle we could see right over here is the infraspinatus. All of this. The teres uh, minor, we could see, I just kind of took a picture from below. Here's the teres minor over here. And we can see it really well if we take the uh, deltoid off. So all of this is the infraspinatus. It's a big muscle. And then it almost looks like it's part of the infraspinatus, but this is the teres minor. This is the third of the rotator cuff muscles, right? So it's going to be right below infraspinatus. And again, you see it best when the deltoid's removed. Now, we can take the whole uh, arm model and turn it around and look at it from the front. The fourth rotator cuff muscle fills up the entire subscapular fossa, hence the name subscapularis. All right, so the four muscles are the supraspinatus above the spine of the scapula, infraspinatus below the spine of the scapula, teres minor. Here it is again, teres minor. See the whole thing. And then the fourth one is going to be the sub scapularis. So let's take a look at what they do. The supraspinatus muscle is actually the muscle that initiates abduction. Right? So if you want to put down as an action, it initiates abduction. In order for us to bring our arm to the side away from their bo our body, the supraspinatus contracts first, brings the arm out about 45 degrees or so, and then the deltoid picks it up and it can bring it up the rest of the way. Right? So supraspinatus is the initiator of abduction. Out of the four rotator cuff muscles, by the way, this is the one that's most frequently injured. Sometimes people have to have surgery on that. The infraspinatus down here is um, the 
it does a couple of things. It does extension, which brings the arm back, and then also lateral rotation, right? It turns the arm out. We sometimes call lateral rotation external rotation. The teres minor, to me, since it almost looks like the infraspinatus, it looks like this could all be one muscle, the teres minor actually runs right along with the infraspinatus. So as a result, it does the same exact thing. It's synergistic to the infraspinatus. So the teres minor, if you want to just put down, does the same thing as the infraspinatus, extension and lateral rotation. Right? It turns the arm out. The fourth rotator cuff muscle, its action is the opposite of the teres minor and the infraspinatus. This is going to do medial rotation, medial rotation, or we could say internal rotation. There's one other muscle, we're going to talk about it next, but I just want to point it out. This is the teres major. This is not considered to be one of the rotator cuff muscles. Um, I just want to point out one of the ways, even if you ever get a chance to do dissection, one of the ways you could always tell the teres minor from the teres major is the long head of the triceps. This is a muscle we're going to do in a minute. will bisect the teres minor and the teres major. So it's a way to confirm uh, what you're looking at. The teres minor would be the smaller muscle above. The teres major is the larger one that's a little bit below. So let's do that one now. The teres major, this muscle actually runs along with the lats, the latissimus dorsi. That was a muscle that we did on our lab of the muscles of the trunk. Some uh, people even consider the teres major the twin to the lats because the lats just run alongside. So if you recall, the action of the latissimus dorsi was to do extension medial rotation and adduction the teres major does exactly the same thing those two muscles are synergistic right so the teres major extends medially rotates and does adduction okay here was the deltoid from the side just to give you another perspective this was a lateral view let's take a look at now the muscles in the anterior compartment. So what we're looking at is the the front of the humerus. The first muscle that we're going to uh, see right here is the biceps brachii. All right, the elbow would be down a little bit below. Or let's see, we have a different picture. Yeah, this is actually a little bit better. Here's the front of the arm. All right, so this is the biceps brachii. All right, we have to say brachii because we'll see when we do the muscles of the lower limb, there's a biceps femoris, right? It's part of the hamstrings. So we can't just say biceps anymore. We want to be more specific. So this is the biceps brachii. Now, just underneath it is the brachialis muscle. On this large arm model, we can't take the biceps brachii off to see the whole brachialis. On the small arm model, if you take a look at that, you'll be able to pop this off. The uh, biceps brachii and be able to see the whole brachialis but this muscle is going to be right inferior to the um, biceps brachii. The third muscle we're going to look at is a muscle that's named based on its attachments. Right? It starts up on the coracoid process of the scapula and then it goes down to the arm, right? brachium meaning the arm. So about goes halfway down on the medial side. It looks like a tube muscle. It runs right along the inside of the biceps brachii. So this big tube right here, right? here's the coracoid process of the shoulder blade goes all the way down it comes down about mid arm and attaches to the to the humerus so what do these muscles do the biceps if you went to the gym today to work out your biceps you would do something probably called a curl you grab a dumbbell and just start you know bending your elbow so its action is to flex the elbow it also flexes the shoulder joint because it does actually cross the front of the, hum uh, the shoulder joint. So it um, does move the shoulder joint also. But most people think of it in the, t in the context of exercises, flexing the elbow. The brachialis also flexes the elbow. So these two muscles, the brachialis and the biceps brachii, are synergistic. 
the coracobrachialis, this muscle does more like adduction of the humerus, and it's going to actually bring the uh, humerus closer to our uh, to our trunk. All right, so that does adduction. Looking at the back of the arm now, this big massive muscle coming up here's the deltoid over here, just kind of do the whole back of the arm all the way down to the olecranon process. This is the prominence of the elbow here. This is called the triceps. So tri meaning three. The triceps has three heads. This long head here, this is what I was mentioning before, that goes up and separates the two teres muscles. This is the head that goes up uh, upwards. Then on the outside, there's a lateral head over here. And then on the inside, there's a medial head. So this is the medial side over here. And right? so those are the three heads. And they all attach to the acromion process down over here. So if you were going to the gym to work out your triceps, you would do the opposite of the bicep. My right? bicep was the flex and do a curl. These are going to be what they call extensions. Right? So you would actually extend the elbow. And that's the action of the tricep. It's going to do extension. It extends the elbow and also extends the shoulder. The last muscle that we're going to take a look at on the arm runs right lateral to the olecranon process. It's a small muscle. It's not that well developed. This is called the anconius. The anconius muscle is synergistic with the triceps and it does extension of the elbow.